Hey guys, it's Keenan with the Cloud Realty Group. And this is Adam Hefner with First Rate Financial. So today we're talking about how you afford property and how it is the best way to decide which property to buy based on those expenses. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is very common these days for a new home buyer to start to search online. Uh, I know that before I buy anything in my life, I like to do a lot of online research in advance. And it's very common that the real estate transaction starts the same way. We all start with Google. I don't know about you, I'm a big Googler. I like researching stuff. And when it came for me to buy my first house, what I did is I laid in bed, I pulled out my iPad, and I said, hey, homes for sale in Anchorage, and you get websites that, that like have the price of the home, what your payment's gonna be, and then come to find out that is not what my payment was gonna be. Mm -hmm. those, those estimates were pretty whack. Mm -hmm. and why is that, Adam? That's a good question, Keenan. Uh, and it's very true. You should be cautious what you read and what you believe on the internet. That may be a shocker to some of you out there, but be wary where you get your information <laughs> Spoiler from. alert. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of things like Zillow and those, those big data aggregation sites, in other parts of the country, they can be pretty accurate when it comes to uh, the cost or the value of the building, maybe even the mortgage payments as well. But up here in Alaska, we are a non-reporting state, and so we don't have the giant public pool of data that Zillow and the, uh, these other sites would pull from. So the governing authority doesn't know what we as public citizens are selling or buying our real estate for. And so the, not only are the, the, the Zestimates wrong, which is the value of the home, but as Keenan pointed out, the mortgage payments. The mortgage payments don't know your credit score, your down payment. They oftentimes don't include mortgage insurance, property taxes, insurance, all of which can be very local kind of things. And they could also just be a loan program that you would never want to use. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, interest only loans and things like that. They're, it sounds really good and it's really sexy and it hooks you in mm -hmm. and gets your attention with that low payment. But then you figure out that like you're not even paying down your principal on that type of mortgage and no one would ever want that except for very few people in very specific situations uh, where those are appropriate. Exactly. And so through lots of experience and working with literally hundreds of buyers, we've decided that the best way to, to, to start this process of shopping for a home really is with a personal budget. So to dig into your own income numbers, figure out how much money you make, what are you spending that money on? Uh, maybe you want to rehash maybe some of what you are prioritizing your dollars, uh, you know, what they're doing. Um, so if you start off with this is my budget for my payment, whether I want it to be 1800 bucks or 2500 bucks, and then back your way in into the purchase price, you'll be way more successful and way happier through the, through the process. Yeah, that's exactly right. Start with the payment that you want, not the house that you, the, you want. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to talk about the house that you want, great. We're still going to start with the payment on this first one, but we're going to help you come up with a plan to get you the house that you want. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to planning for building a, buying a home, building a home, investing in real estate, there's a lot of things to take into consideration and Google doesn't have all the answers, but if you give us a call, we'll make sure that you're taken care of. Talk to you soon. Bye.